Before we begin, make sure you have downloaded Lightroom Classic. There are two versions available. The Classic is the one we want. Let's start by taking a look at your interface. Over to your left, this is where we organize and import our photos. Over to your right is where we do all of our editing. Take a look at the top menu navigation. For this tutorial, we will only use the library and develop tab. If you are importing only one photo, go ahead and use this import button. But if you have a bunch of photos you want to import, there is a way to import a folder of photos. Click the plus icon located at the top right of your folders panel and add folder. A couple of mine are grayed out because I had already imported those images. This is where you can choose to check or uncheck select photos for import. I will check all and click the import button over here at the right. Now your photos have been uploaded into your Lightroom library. I am going to select the rooster photo for this lesson. I took a photo of this handsome guy when I visited Thailand a few years back. Now let's go over to our develop tab and expand our basic panel. This is considered the correction phase and it is highly recommended that you start here. Let's start with white balance. We can adjust it manually with these temp and tint sliders, but we can also use the white balance feature. White balance is a crucial aspect of photography with the idea being that the colors in an image should appear natural and accurate under different lighting conditions. I'll grab this eyedropper tool and look for a neutral target within the beak. I like it better, but I will move the temp and tint sliders just a bit. I personally like warmer tones in my photos, so I struggle to accept the cool corrections that I get. Now is a good time for me to introduce the sweet before and after feature. By clicking on the Y here, I get a super helpful before and after view. The keyboard key Y is the shortcut for that. Take a moment to experiment with each of these sliders. This is the exposure slider. If you double click on this, it will reset to zero. Try out the contrast slider and the highlight slider and the shadow slider. This is where Lightroom isolates the lighter and darker areas for you to easily modify. Let's skip down to vibrance and saturation to check out these sliders. You might wonder what the difference is between the two. They are similar, but whereas saturation boosts the saturation to all colors in the photo, the vibrant slider boosts the saturation of less saturated colors while leaving already vibrant colors largely unchanged. So to sum that up, saturation is uniform and vibrance is selective. I'll go back up and slightly modify the contrast, highlights, and shadows sliders. Let's collapse the basic panel and expand the tone curve panel. We won't use this today since I want to stay focused on the basics. Just know that it is a very popular feature with professional photographers. The tone curve panel offers powerful tools for adjusting the tonal values and contrast in your photos. Here you can fine tune the brightness and contrast of different parts of your image by manipulating a curve that represents the distribution of tones from shadows to highlights. You can also go into each color, red, green, and blue, and adjust more specifically. Okay, let's close that panel and open up the next panel. This is our color correction mode. We have our red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta sliders. Take a look at the rooster head as I pull up the red slider. I pulled that red right out and turned it into more of an orange. If you pull it down, it turns it into more of a pink. I suggest experimenting. You probably want to make small adjustments to these sliders, but it all depends on your intent. I made small adjustments to the red and green sliders. Next, let's take a look at this little toolbar. We've been working under the Edit tab. If I find myself lost or stuck, I know I can get back with this tab. Let's check out the Healing tool. We're going to use the Content Aware Remover option. Let's try to remove these little spots of bird poop. I like that it adds a grittiness to the photo, which is authentic, but I think it's distracting from my subject, and I don't want to distract the viewer from my beautiful rooster. I'll zoom in first, then we will remove them with this easy tool. You can change the size of the selection here. I am holding down and dragging around my target areas. 
For this last one, it's small enough that I can just click once. I will click back over here to the edit tool to get a clean view. I think it blended in just fine. These healing tools are super fun and they're surprisingly good at deleting people in the background of photos. This is a red eye remover. We'll skip over that, but I do want to show you the Lightroom masking feature. There are several kinds of masking you can do. Let's start with a linear gradient mask. This little panel will appear. This is my mask. Go over to the photo and drag over this area to place the gradient. My thinking is that I want to bring focus down to my subject matter. This red is the masking color only visible when we are editing. I will pull the exposure down to create a dark gradient. Sliding it up would make it lighter. It looks a bit unnatural, but I can easily go back over and pull on these little handles to change the size. I can also move it and rotate it. Let's create one more mask. Because we already have one mask created, now we can go up here to the plus button to create additional masks. Let's try the brush feature. I am using the brush to select this area on the wheel. Even though I like this purple, I am just worried that it looks out of place and might be distracting. Select a brush size and then brush the area you want to change. If you look over here, you can see tiny thumbnails representing each mask you have created. For this wheel, I am adjusting the saturation slider and the exposure slider to eliminate the purple emphasis it once had. Now let's go to our cropping tool. This is our last step. When you click on the crop tool icon, it will probably default to this grid, which is your rule of thirds grid. The idea here is that these intersecting areas might be where you want to place important parts of your photo, like your focal point or areas of interest. I want the rooster head to be near one of these intersections. Actually, before I do that, I should check my ratio. I will go with the eight and a half by 11, and it was pretty close to that already. It will now maintain that aspect ratio. Then you press enter to apply the crop. This is where you might want to take another look at the composition and consider more adjustments. In all candor, this photo still needs work. I prefer the original red hue, and I think the wheel and rock need to go. I wanted there to be some framing, but it just looks off. However, for the sake of time, let's pretend it's good the way it is. Let's save. Go to the file dropdown and export. Select your desired location and click export. We now have a high quality photograph that we can print at the eight and a half by 11 size. I am going to do a Lightroom hack by taking a screenshot of the before and after. That's a shift command four on a Mac. And then I can drag a selection exactly around the side-by-side -side photo comparison. That's saved right to my desktop. 